Welcome to this Thanksgiving Eve service. On behalf of Christ the King in Delafield, Delafield Presbyterian Church, Cattle Moraine United Presbyterian Church, St. Joan of Arc Delafield, and St. Catherine Mapleton, we welcome you all. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name, for the Lord is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. His faithfulness to all generations. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. It was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. And we rejoiced. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. The earth has yielded its increase. 
God. Our God has blessed us. May God continue to bless us. Let all the ends of the earth revere him. Praise God, all creatures here below. Let the heavens praise your wonders, O Lord, your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies can be compared to you, O Lord? Who among the heavenly beings is like the Lord, a God feared in the counsel of the holy ones, great and awesome above all that are around him. Praise God above ye heavenly host. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol him, all you peoples, for great is his steadfast love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. Praise God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. May God be with you all, and also with you. Let us sing our thanks to God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Blessed are you, creator of the universe. From old you have led your people by day and night. May the light of your Christ make our darkness bright. For the word and your presence are the light of our pathways. And you are the light and the life of all creation. Amen. Wow. 
hands before you, the lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. All praise to the God of all creator of life. All praise to the Christ and the May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense. And may your presence surround and fill us so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Times of abundance tempt us to forget God and, and to rely only on our own power and our own resources. But God is the one who took Israel out of Egypt, led and fed them in the wilderness, brought them back into the land, and, and gave them power to be productive. To thank God is to remember and proclaim God's deeds. So, here our first reading. It's from Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verses 7 through 18. This is God's word for you. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land flowing with streams and springs, with underground waters welling up in valleys and hills, a land with wheat and barley of, of vines and, and fig trees and pomegranates, a land with olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing. A land whose stones are iron and, and from whose hills are, you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill and then bless the Lord, your God, for, for the Lord has been good and has given you the land. Take care that you do not forget the Lord by failing to keep his commandments, his ordinances, his statutes, which I am commanding you today. When you have eaten your fill and you have built your houses and live in them, and when you, your herds and flocks have multiplied and, and your silver and gold um, have multiplied, then do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, an arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions. God made water flow from flint rock and fed you with manna that your ancestors did not know to humble you, to test you, and in the end, to do you good. Do not say to yourself, my power and the might of my own hand have gotten me this wealth. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, so that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your ancestors as he is doing today. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our reading comes from Psalm 65. You are to be praised, O God, in Zion. To you shall vows be fulfilled. To you, the one who answers prayer. To you, all flesh shall come. Our sins are stronger than we but you blot out our transgressions. Happy are they whom you choose to draw your, to your courts and dwell there. And they will be satisfied by the beauty of your house and by the holiness of your temple. Awesome things 
You will show us in your righteousness, O God, of our salvation. O hope of all the ends of the earth and of the oceans far away, you will make firm the mountains by your power. You are girded with might. You will still the roaring of the seas, the roaring of the waves, the clamor of the peoples. Those who dwell at the ends of the earth will tremble at your marvelous signs. You will make the dawn and the dusk sing for joy. You visit the earth and water it abundantly. You will make it very plenteous. The river of God is full of water. You prepare grain, and for so you provide for the earth. You drench the furrows and smooth out the ridges. With heavy rain, you soften the ground and bless its increase. You crown the year with your goodness and your paths overflow with plenty. May the fields of the wilderness be rich for grazing and the hills be clothed with joy. May the meadows cover themselves with flocks and the valleys cloak themselves with grain and let them shout for joy and sing. Here ends our psalm. Christian fellowship involves sharing with those in need. Here Paul is gathering a collection for the church in Jerusalem from all the Gentile churches he helped found. We can be extravagant in our giving because God is extravagant in providing for our lives. Here begins our reading, our second reading, from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 15. The point is this. The one who sows sparingly also reaps sparingly. And the one who sows bountifully also will reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. He who supplies the seed to the sower and bread for the food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and will increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of his ministry not only supplies the need of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgiving to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ by the generosity of your sharing with them and with all others. While they were long longing for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace that God has given you. Thanks be to God for this inscribable gift. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A Samaritan leper becomes a model for thanksgiving. He does not take for granted the kindness shown to him, but he takes time to thank Jesus and to glorify God. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? 
Then he said to him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, happy Thanksgiving Eve to everyone. And I'm Pastor Jackie Cook from Christ the King here in Delafield. And what a pleasure it's been to work and get to know Pastor Matt and Pastor Nikki and Ellen as we put this service together and all the musicians. Since I'm the new one in the area, I got the opportunity to preach. So thank you for that. Do not forget the Lord your God. These words from Deuteronomy just jump right out of the text at me this week. For how often have we, have really have I, forgotten to live with gratitude? When I first entered the seminary in 2010, my husband and I seriously thought about that assignment process, which meant we could end up anywhere for first call. And my family lived not too far from here in North Prairie during that time. And so many were assigned to the Greater Milwaukee Synod that I felt confident that we ended, would end up here. Instead, I was assigned to Southwest Minnesota, and I felt far from grateful. We worship a God who prepares the grain and provides bread and nourishment to the earth, even when our response is like the nine lepers. By sending me into rural ministry, God knew what God was doing, and God supplied what I needed to grow. Thus, on this Thanksgiving Eve, I'd like to share with you three things for which I am now thankful. Creation, creativity, and community. And I invite you, as I speak tonight, to imagine those three things for which you thank God. First of all, I'm thankful to God for the gift of creation. In rural ministry, I was surrounded by the richest, darkest earth. I even got to see sun dogs. I saw how golden the fields turned. I saw the miracle of God's handiwork on full display. And after the winter, how the winds blew to dry out the fields and the sun warmed the soil. And then I got to hold the seeds in my hand and they seemed like nothing. But they were little miracles that I held because they blossomed into the crops. God's creation just bursted forth from everywhere around me, including through God's farmers who taught me many things. They taught me how they knew just one to plant based on experience and science and some had gone to school, the education. But most of all, they taught me that they couldn't control the things around them. They couldn't control the weather, so they planted the seeds, and then they just prayed. And it was one particular wet spring where I lamented for the farmers. And the farmer's wife just said to me, that's the way it is. God always has found a way for us. Some years that harvest looked doubtful, too much rain, too little rain, the early snow. And when the harvest came, there was a celebration and it was usually in church through a service. I've lamented with and prayed for the farmers and marveled at their resiliency. Most of all, I learned from their strong faith. Year after year, as they toiled, they prayed and they hoped. And with gratitude, I now have beheld how God abundantly filled feeds the world through them. Now, farming was in Lloyd's family for generations, and during the harvest, he would pick my husband and I up in his old pickup truck, and he would drive us along the harvester, and that was a sight to see. These machines were huge. He would pick up the corn stalks and shoot the corn out of the other end into the truck, and then I would go to Ruth's house, and Ruth was in her upper 80s, and she taught me her family secret of how you, what you do with that fresh corn, how you freeze that. What a delight. You haven't tasted anything better than fresh corn. So as I think about this, I find myself at the feet of, the G of Jesus, like that 10th leper, giving praise to God for sending me to rural Minnesota because I know God's plan is bigger than I could have asked or imagined. 
Secondly, I'm grateful for creativity. This is a curious time, isn't it? We physical distance, we wear masks, and it's not even Halloween. We gather differently for Thanksgiving and for worship. And now our abundant God is creating ways that we learn how to be together. Creating ways, using our imaginations. So a year ago, how many of us even knew how to Zoom? (laughs) Or thought that we'd have tech people that could put our services together so brilliantly? Or that we would worship in our cars using radio transmitters? And this evening, you'll be able to experience the music of St. John's and St. Catherine's because of technology. It just makes me wonder, and I'm hopeful for what God has in store for us for Advent and Christmas. So when you think of God's gift of creativity, what makes you thankful? The creativity of authors has sustained so many during this season. One book called 1,000 Gifts by Anne Voskamp has been speaking to my heart. Anne had a friend who dared her to name 1,000 gifts 1,000 times at the feet of Jesus. For Anne wrote this. The problem in my life is never a lack of time. The real problem of life in my life is the lack of thanksgiving. And she later says... Thanksgiving creates abundance and the miracle of multiplying happens when I give thanks. Take the one loaf, say it's enough and give thanks. And Jesus miraculously makes it more than enough. And found that the intentional naming of these grace moments, listing God's gifts, increased her sense of joy. I wonder what it would look like if we intentionally practiced naming God's gifts. And lastly, I appreciate God's gift of community. God has blessed my husband Randy and I with coming back home, close to my dad and to my family, close to the community of Delafield and the churches which we were once a part of. We feel like we're home again. And although we now at this time might not be able to gather with friends and family for Thanksgiving like prior years, there's many ways that we can all do that, like phone calls and FaceTime and Zoom to keep us connected. Because our God is so wonderful. He knits us into the body of Christ in the church, even when we can't physically be together. And I believe that since creating community is different right now, God is increasing in me and maybe some others an appreciation for human connection. So I'm grateful for the various ways that community is created through drive through communions, through Zoom coffee hours, through parking lot worships. And I'm thankful for new colleagues and for the tech team who's made this ecumenical service possible. So think about what various communities do you hold dear and for which you are now grateful. My dear friends in Christ, do not forget the Lord your God, for God always remembers you. God supplies all that you need to grow. Everything we have comes from God, grain and earth, nourishment and possessions, families and relationships, life itself, and salvation. And as we thank God for creativity, creation, and community, and anything else that's on your heart, let us remember that Thanksgiving is not just a time of year. It's a practice that displays our humble gratitude that we carry in our hearts. So like the leper, may we kneel at the feet of Jesus and live in joyous thanksgiving for the love that God extends to us. Amen. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. An angel went from God to a town called Nazareth to a woman whose name was Mary. The angel said to her, Rejoice!
hands and keep us from danger. and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life. Give to your people the peace that passes understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, friends, you're invited to join me in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us bless our God, praise and thanks to you. May God, Creator, bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever light for our lives. May the Spirit of love be our guide and path for all our Thank you. 